Hey YouTube, Dr. Sean here. I want to do a video today about grass-fed beef. Okay, I want to start in the beginning ancestrally. Humans are the only species, in my humble opinion, that I'm aware of that are selective about how we hunt. We would have used our cerebral cortex, which is uniquely available to us, to hunt the very healthiest animal amongst a tribe or herd of whatever we were hunting. Typically, it would probably would have been like megafauna, which we hunted to extinction, or maybe bison. But we wouldn't have just shot with a bow and arrow or a spear or thrown a rock at it, even in the very old days, uh, the, the least healthy um, part of the herd. We would have selected the very best animal. Why? Because it would have had the best nutrition. We would have been, we didn't really understand the concept of nutrition, but we would have known that it would have conferred the greatest amount of benefit to us rather than going for the diseased animal, the old animal, the, the young one that didn't have as much capability and, and uh, benefit to um, us consuming it. So I want to try to make a pitch for you to be that kind of a selective hunter today. Even though you may not be a hunter and going out with, with weapons to go out and hunt, you can be that kind of a discerning hunter when it comes to selecting your food. So the inspiration for today's video actually came from my lunch today. So we had some, some beef, I thought them out uh, from the freezer at the same time, but there are two different kinds of beef, very different. Um, both were labeled as grass-fed. One I bought from my boutique uh, provider grass fed that's local and trusted and has really unusual beef that I really, really value. Um, and I know them, I've, I've been aware of their, their farm operation for years. And uh, they, they make milk that's just golden yellow. <laughs> I would buy their milk, it was golden and yellow. It's very interesting. They would drive, you know, very far distances, go get a calf that had never been fed any any grain and they would they would be laughing at me how absurd the farmer was <laughs> because they wanted to feed this cow uh, grain and very they were very upset you know not being able to feed this this calf grain and so I could tell that farmer my supplier was was really educated about ancestrally how these cows are supposed to be so I trust them for milk and then they called me up one day and said hey you should uh, maybe you want to buy some of our, our beef and our beef is just so you know Sean it's kind of tough and it's got a strong flavor and you know so we just tell people before you buy it so I'm thinking god this person is a terrible salesperson I made it sound like it was really going to be bad beef but my biological brain was telling me god that sounds like really good uh, grass-fed beef. And it sure was. It was tough. It had this unusual flavor and it was so red. So that's what I had right here. Okay. So it's really, really red when I thought it. And it's really red even before you thought compared to this uh, labeled 100% grass-fed from a uh, supermarket that, that, I, that we got some. And, uh, and you can see a big difference. Okay. This just has a much more vigorous, vital look to it because these people were crazy about making sure that they didn't ever get any grain. And these people, uh, I'm pretty sure this cow got some grain. So big difference, um, a couple of few things. When I eat this, it's almost like glue. It's really kind of thick. It's hard to, it's very sticky, you know, when I'm making these, these, uh, these patties and very chewy kind of, um, you know, when I would, uh, would eat them. So just a different texture altogether besides the appearance. And then we'll get into some other photographs so you can see the difference of those, um, of those, uh, uh, of the meat as well. So one thing for grass-fed beef is, is typically leaner, okay? So it has a leaner look, uh, not as much fat on the intramuscular aspect, of, of, the, of the cow, of the flesh, and it has a, a fat cap that's golden yellow, okay? The better the quality of the, the meat, the more grass-fed it is, the, the richer the, gold, the, the fat is, the golden yellow. And what it is is the beta carotenes, the carotenoids, the nutrient value in those grass. But what was interesting to me is my farmer, I called them up and said, why is your fat so golden yellow? I've just never seen grass-fed. And they told me it's our grass. So I had never really conceived that. Um, grass is not grass. B 
Beef is not beef. Humans are not humans. There's very big variability. So the healthier the grass that the cow eats, the healthier the cow is. And the, therefore, the healthier uh, the beef the human eats, the healthier we are. So be selective about that type of beef that you get in. So one tip, golden yellow fat. If it's grass fed, it's going to have a golden yellow fat. It may be richer and darker in the spring. So ideally, um, those, those shoots that come in the spring have a, have a, a, a different level of nutrient value so that it's, they're, it confers higher nutrition. Those early, really green grass, so those cows getting, you want to make sure that they, they get a lot of that as opposed to cows that were not available or, or didn't get that kind of grass. So if it was mowed and sent somewhere else or something, then the, that cow that is, is not going to get that. So look for that really rich golden yellow uh, color to that fat. And uh, here's another picture of this. This was sent by, um, by a chef of one of my clients. So <laughs> one of my clients, very clever guy, set up, a, I, I take care of clients through uh, groups, okay? That's how I, I, I put them in groups and we're working on all these different things together. And uh, my client learned how well that was working uh, for me. So he set up his own group uh, for me and his chef. You know, it's just like, I'm gonna get Dr. Sean to work with my chef make sure I get super healthy food. So uh, the chef was talking to me about how he found this 100% grass fed. And I said, hey, time out. Uh, I want to take care of my client. You show me a picture of that beef because I want to make sure it's 100% grass fed and it looks like it's going to satisfy Dr. Sean's eyes. And sure enough, it does. Look at that beautiful yellow, the beautiful red. And I just love this photograph. I actually blew it up and turned it into a poster to hang it to my, my office because I think it's a work of art. It just, something about it. It's just the biology. It tells me, muy bueno. When my brain looks at that, it says it's very good. So uh, look for those colors. Very red. No, uh, not a lot of fat or any fat de deposit in there should be a very minimal amount of myosteatosis, fatty infiltrates in the skeletal muscle and that real golden yellow uh, fat cap. So unfortunately, the consumer, this is so sad, the consumer is, is used to seeing white fat. So you might go in the supermarket and think you want to see white fat. You don't. That doesn't have the nutrient value that... Um, and it's probably not going to have the same ratios of omega-3 and omega-6s because it's going to be uh, more predominantly grain-fed and the conjugated linoleic acids and the nutrient value of a cow that's been raised out in a field the way it's supposed to be out in nature eating grass instead of confined where it's stressed out and higher temperatures or whatever um, it might be exposed to in a confined animal feeding operation. So the quality of the environment which the animals raise and the quality of the the diet the animals raise is going to dictate how healthy that meat is. So you want to look for those particular features um, when you're selecting. So, all right. So here's a comparison. Um, this is Costco beef. I'm not going to get in trouble mentioning that. All right. And I bought it at Costco. <laughs> all right. We'll see what happens. I like Costco. I like you guys. Don't come after me. <laughs> all right. Hey, so this is a uh, this got a lot of fat in here. See that intramuscular fat, a lot of deposition of fat. In it. It's got that white fat. Um, but, you know, Costco is honest. I mean, they're not they're not selling this stuff as represented as grass fed. It's just conventional. It's going to be grain fed predominantly. Is, it, they, may, they might get a little grass, but predominantly, you know, Costco is kind of you know, it's going to have a lot more grain uh, than probably grass. And then this is one of those, you know, supermarket grass fed like the photograph. I showed you the hamburger that was supposedly grass-fed uh, at the bottom compared to the boutique hamburger I get from my trusted farmer that, that are so really fringy. You know, they're, they're just really pressing the, the limits there. This is, has got a fair amount of fatty deposits in more than I like to see. It's got a little yellow tinge to its fat, but not, not like this fat. See that golden yellow? That's from, <laughs> again, my farmer. Uh, that I got that's really a dairy farm and they, they sold me one of their cows was was time's up <laughs> so I got that cow because I knew it was all grass-fed and beautiful golden yellow fat very lean muscle this is the bone so uh, that is don't be too alarmed about that uh, but this is the flesh this is the flesh and, and a lack of fat infiltrate so 
when you go to select your meat, and if you're buying it from a local farmer and there's a website called eatwild.com, I have no affiliation whatsoever with anything I mention. okay? If I have a financial affiliation, it's not gonna come from my lips, okay? Um, and I don't. I don't. I don't have money to go invest in stuff anyhow. So, but nonetheless, at eWild.com, if you put the zip code in, you can find farmers um, that provide unique or boutique kind of uh, uh, purveyors of food. But you still got to go do your work. You got to go to that farm and check and see if they're really grass fed. You know, I had I went to one of those farmers that said, "Oh yeah, we're grass fed," and yeah, I guess they you know they do allow their cows to go out there. But then I go in their barn. And they had all this fish meal protein in big bags. I'm like, ah, don't jinx so. Dr. Sean's not going to be buying any cows have been fed a bunch of dried pulverized uh, powdered uh, fish protein. So no, I <laughs> changed my mind. So uh, yeah, you want to make sure that you go in and check out that operation, see that they really are 100% grass fed and grass finished. So a lot of people will say they're grass fed, but then they finish off with grain at the end, the last six months of the animal's life. So you fatten it up so that it weighs more so they get more profit. So uh, look for leaner meat and look for that golden yellow color. All right, so um, here's an example when I would talk about that those fatty infantries. Okay, so grass fed, very lean, okay, doesn't have those fatty streaks in it. and um, so marbling is what we call it. This one has a lot of marbling. So this is all grain fed, grain finished, um, you know, may, may include corn or soy or whatever, but it's got um, a lot of, a uh, lot of deposition of fat. So we call that infiltrating fat that is uh, in that muscle. And the other term for that is marbling. Okay. Well, humans can marble. That's right. So if you eat a diet, uh, if a cow eats a diet that's not species specific, cows eat grass. So if it eats a diet that's not specific for that particular species, things go wrong. And one of the things that go wrong are these fatty depositions. Now, butchers and people like Ruth Crisp and Capital Grill and all these other places may like the fact that that has marbleized steak because consumers want that. And it, it does make it more tender. Um, but that doesn't mean it's better for you. You know, it may, it just may have that kind of a taste. Uh, so I'm going to make a strong appeal for you. Don't get that marbleized steak. You want to eat a grass fed steak without that fatty infantry. And you don't want that crap going, going on in your body. You don't want to have muscles <laughs> with fat like that. And we see that, you know, Dr. Sean sees that with my clients when I scan them. And so to the degree I don't see that muy bueno. Okay. I tell them way to go. Um, but you know, I do see a lot of clients come in and have tons of that, um, that, that those fatty infiltrates. And let's take a look how that looks. Okay, this association. So uh, here's here's one of my clients. Phil, look at all that white stuff in there. Okay, what is that? Some of you know visceral fat. Okay, that is highly inflammatory, and the same process that causes that fat to lay down is mostly coming from processed foods, processed carbs, that cause that deposition of highly inflammatory substance, visceral adipose tissue, visceral fat, or deep belly fat, the same process that caused that is causing the deposition of these of fat within the skeletal muscle. So these are cross sections through your thighs. Would you, would you like to cut through into your thigh and see a bunch of fat in it? How about, I mean, this is a scary thought. How about if you had a baby, a small child, and you cut through and you saw all that fat in that, in that child's muscles. No, I mean, that should intuitively tell you that is not good. So um, what we see is to the extent we see this visceral fat, we see this. And to the extent that we see no visceral fat, look at this teeny tiny little bit there. This, by the way, in this corner here is not visceral fat. That's retroperitoneal. And this guy's got awesome, awesome muscles. This guy has teeny tiny muscles. So these are big muscles. He's wall-to-wall -wall muscle, no visceral fat and he's got no fat in his legs, okay? So the body tells the story throughout. You don't just have a healthy ear or a healthy nose. You got a healthy body, and if you are healthy all over, you're healthy everywhere, okay, in one spine. It's symmetric. And same thing with disease. You know, if you got disease in one particular area, you can have disease, it often spreads everywhere. So this is how it's oftentimes media, the very first sign of something going wrong. 
that we would see as when I was doing research from the National Science Foundation is in the gut. Starts as visceral fat. We see it in kids. My own kids I scan when they're five years old. <laughs> they had visceral fat. Uh, and the, the one that had the most was the one that is the, the least healthy even t to this day is persisted. So we're working with them. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's definitely, definitely improving. Um, but yeah, so you don't want a lot of this. You don't want this. You want lots of good dark muscles. You want skeletal muscle that don't have a lot of fat. Okay. So it should inspire you when you select that meat in your body uh, that's going to be going at your body to be very discerning. It's like when you're out hunting, you know, bow and arrow 50,000 years ago and, uh, or 25,000 years ago, whatever it was we were doing, however, when bow and arrows were, were discovered, invented, <laughs> um, you want to be selective about the animal that you're going to eat and the food source you're going to eat. So let's take a look. Um, how do you, how, how did the Native Americans, how did, how did our ancestors know what well, they could tell by the appearance and the performance of that cow, how it moved, that bison, how it was moving around, okay? It wasn't walking around like, like you know, shimmering and having a hard time. That's how this, this cow, you know, if, you know it, it, humans, when they get filled with a lot of fat as you get older, you know, you, your muscles just don't, don't work as well. So just how you walk around can reflect how much fatty infiltration you have either inside your gut or within your skeletal system. So our answers nailed that. They could, you know, from a great distance, tell which animal was the healthiest. And we're losing that capability. You know, we, we, we think white fat is good. And we think that da some people think the dad bod is good. They're actually attracted to it. We are circling the drain. We really are. Just the disease, we can't even tell what's healthy anymore. So let's take a look at this guy, um, how he looks in person, okay? That is uh, Emmanuel Matadi, at Matadi, at M-A-T-A-D-I. He is an Olympic sprinter. He looks good. He looks good by his MRI. It is the best abdominal MRI, uh, abdominal scan I've ever seen in my entire career as a physician, 25 years. Uh, my boy Matadi, he is awesome. He's an Olympic sprinter and the fastest men in the world. So he looks good and he performs well. And again, he got all those muscles just from sprinting. When this photograph was taken, he was not lifting weights, was not doing push-ups or pull-ups. He was just sprinting. So sprinting is fantastically healthy. So to kind of sum up this video, you want to be that kind of ancient hunter. You want to have those values that your ancestors of old had you know, when it came to selecting the animal that was going to be good enough for them to eat and for their family to eat was the best animal in the herd. Okay, they didn't just, you know, you know, lions and tigers and other predators. They go for the young, they go for the old, they go for the injured. But we can use our brains to go for the best. And that shouldn't stop today because in modern day society, we're buying packaged meat. No, you should be selective about that meat. So sum it up, golden fat. Very low fat infiltrates in those muscles and should be really red, very vigorous, vital looking meat. Okay. So use those skills to be selective about what you're going to eat and uh, consider, you know, getting an MRI, getting an MRI, see how much visceral fat you have and how much uh, fatty infiltrates you have in your skeletal muscle. Doctors aren't ordering this uh, to be done, they're not reading it. You should do this to understand it. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching my videos. Um, as always, I appreciate uh, uh, any feedback and comments that you have. Uh, share this with other people so we can promote good health optimizing content to uh, help our country and our, our species become the healthiest we can possibly be. All right. Well, until next time, this is Dr. Sean, and I'll see you on another health optimizing video.